So you consider making a move to St. Petersburg, Florida? Well, don't unless you can handle the things that I'm about to share with you today. I'm gonna cover all the things that you wanna know, but I'm also gonna cover one of the things that no one ever wants to talk about. Is St. Pete safe? So make sure you stick around for that one. We'll also cover the weather, bugs, wildlife, cost of living, traffic, the people, and housing. You'll even hear directly from a few locals I interviewed who share their least favorite things about living here in St. Pete. So what's the one thing you already can't stand? The traffic. I don't have no complaints. Traffic's pretty rough, right? Pretty solid. My name is Juan, and just about five years ago, I packed up my family of five, and we moved from Metro Detroit all the way here to Tampa Bay. And man, have we learned a lot about the pros and cons of living here in the area. My goal with today's video is to share the tough lessons we've learned so you don't have to learn them too. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the Tampa Bay area. So I can help you with that too. So first off, there is a lot to love about living in St. Petersburg. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I love this city. I take my wife and my family down here all the time. We live in the Indian Rocks Beach area, which is about 30 to 35 minutes to the Northwest, right off the Gulf Coast. And me and my wife do date night. We usually go to Dunedin, we go to Tampa, and then we also go to St. Pete. And this town is alive. I mean, it's got an entire vibe about it that, you know, it's hard to explain until you experience it. A lot of the times when we have clients come in from across the country, I'll take them there because they've heard of it, but they're not quite sure. And it really usually just blows people's minds. They see something that they did not expect. I mean, it's gorgeous. You've got the Museum of Fine Arts, the Dali Museum, Museum of History. Uh, St. Pete Pier, it's on the bay. I mean, I could wax poetically for hours, right? The Grand Central District, all of the wonderful art and the murals all over the building, it has a vibe. It is absolutely awesome. But as you and I both know, <laughs> if you got a pro, you also got a con. And your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. And that is what we're going to cover today. We're going to get in the weeds of things that people don't like to talk about. I'm not bringing you a fluff piece here today. We're going to tackle the things that most people don't want to talk about or they don't want to let rub the shine off their city. So let's get into those. And we're going to start with the obvious one in the room, which is weather. This is the thing that most people absolutely love about Florida. But as a Floridian now, um, I got to be honest with you, the summers here are tough. And when I say tough, I mean they are tough. From July, August, September, our average temperatures are over 90 degrees every single day. You may live in an area where you've experienced that before. Let me give you a little bit of the subtlety here, okay? I've lived in Michigan my entire life for the most part. I was born in California, but we lived in Michigan my entire life. We experienced temperatures in the, in the mid 90s, even high 90s. But the one point of difference between that and those temperatures there and here is there is never any relief. I mean, in the peak of the summer here, it can literally be 80 to 83 degrees in the middle of the night. So you don't ever get away from that. And there's this, the city is full of concrete, which the sun bakes on all day long, cooks those temperatures and concrete is really good at holding that, <laughs> that heat in and letting it go at night. So like, it just doesn't let up. And with the really high humidity in the summer, you add those two things together, it can be very, very difficult on people. So I understand that. We tend to take our vacations during that time of the year. I would encourage you to do that as well. You know, on top of that, this is hurricane season. Now, the one thing I will say is the Tampa Bay area and St. Pete have been absolutely blessed. We have not had a direct hurricane strike of a Cat 3 or higher since 1921. I mean, that's going back quite a ways. Exactly 100 years ago today that the last major hurricane hit the Tampa Bay area. This was 1921 when a storm so strong struck Tarpon Springs. Lord willing, we'll continue for another 100 years. I don't play a weatherman, so I'm not going to pretend to understand all the things about it. The locals say it's because of the Indians. I don't know why, but we have been very fortunate here in Tampa Bay, which is very strange because when you look at the map, and you look all the way to the west coast, west central Florida, you see that we stick out the furthest of anyone up until you get back in the panhandle. And for whatever reason, we have been very fortunate. We had a serious scare last year with Ian, but that slid to the south, so we've been very fortunate in that respect. So these are some things that you're gonna have to deal with that you may not necessarily love. Now, the advantage of this, and people ask me all the time, they say, Juan, 
what is the biggest difference between living in the north and living in Florida when it comes to weather? And I tell everybody the same exact thing. You do not have to shovel sunshine. So the next thing on our list we're gonna get to is the creepy crawlies, the bugs and the wildlife. And this was an eye opener for me. Being an ignorant northerner, I had no idea of the things that I was gonna encounter here. And <laughs> boy, did I get an education. Um, some things I was prepared for, others not so much, but hey, this is the cost of living in an area where you get 260 plus days of sunshine every year and it never freezes. Thank the Lord, we get zero. As a matter of fact, zero inches of snow. Should have mentioned that during the weather. But with that comes the other side of it, right? So we have bugs, obviously. We have uh, reptiles, snakes, alligators, which we're gonna get into here in a second. Birds of, that are different than you're probably used to seeing where you're at. They might not be, but I, I need to fill you in on this stuff. So, you know, the mosquitoes. Everyone is always asking about the mosquitoes for good reasons. Probably because you have an uncle or an aunt who told you that um, if you move to Florida, the mosquitoes are terrible, you're going to be eaten alive, which could be true. But that totally depends on where you live. If you live in a low-lying area that retains a bunch of water after storms, Yes, the mosquitoes are gonna be uh, hot and heavy down there. If you live in areas that aren't in flood zones that don't tend to retain water like that, I gotta be honest with you, we don't have a lot of that problems. I live closer to the beach as I've discussed, but mosquitoes aren't really bad where I live. But if I drive a mile south to my neighbor's house, all of a sudden it becomes a serious problem because they live in a flood zone. So this is just something to keep in perspective as you look at what type of property you're considering and what areas you're living in. But mosquitoes can get pretty gnarly, but they aren't any different than I experienced back home in the Great Lakes state. We had water all over the place. Mosquitoes tore our behinds up every summer it was part of just living in the area it's what we had to deal with now the next two that i'm going to share these are the ones i think you really got to look out for and you may or may not be aware of them uh, but i had an education okay so no seams and these things are way worse than mosquitoes and they are literally called no see ums it's spelled phonetically just like you say it and you can't see them that's why they're called no see ums i mean that's not complicated right these little buggers tend to hide out in the shade. When you go to a park in the middle of the summer and you find a nice shaded area because it's 10 degrees cool over there and you can't wait to get over there and it's moist at all, I'm telling you right now, you will not see them and your butt is gonna get chewed up. They can tear you up. Now this isn't at every single park, not every place, but <laughs> the no see are for real, all right? The other ones that I wasn't ready for were the fire ants. We did not have fire ants in Michigan. That was not a thing. Here, fire ants build these mounds, these nests, and they're underground, and they tend to hide in the lawn. And if you step on a, 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 a fire ant nest, it will light you up. Uh, my son stepped on one before. It was, man, they chewed him up quick. I have never had that happen. I hope it never happens to you, but this is definitely something that you want to be aware of. Now, we've also got snakes, alligator, lizards, jellyfish, sharks, all kinds of stuff. Do I think you need to worry about them all the time? No, but here's what I'm gonna tell you, right? If you go in the ocean, guess where sharks live? They live in the ocean. <laughs> now, me and my family, we're not afraid to go out there. That is totally a decision you need to make. If you do the research on it, you're more likely to be struck by lightning twice than get bit by a shark. However, when it comes to any fresh body of water that's inland, I gotta be honest with you. Me and my family, we've just made a decision that 100% there is an alligator that lives in that water. I am not getting in there because I am guaranteed to get bit. That's not true, but it's what I believe. And I just want to keep my extremities. I want to keep all the things that are important to me. And we've made a decision as a family. We're not playing around in fresh water in Florida. We're just giving it back to the creatures. It belongs to them. They own it outright. And I'll tell you what, one of the people in Tampa Bay that I absolutely love following, his name is OMG, it's Wix. I want him to explain all of the fun stuff we have in Florida. Um, editor, why don't you uh, cut cut to the B-roll here? Sir, my name is OMG, it's Wix. I am the Floridian. Now, I will give you that. Florida does have leprosy. You wanna know what else Florida has? Uh, Florida also has giant African snails and mosquitoes carrying malaria. We've had mosquitoes carrying West Nile. We've had mosquitoes carrying Zika. We had Rona. We had flesh-eating bacteria and brain-eating amoebas. Now, you want to know what all that has in common? None of them have stopped Floridians from Florida. 
and that's on Florida. Now let's cover the topic that everybody is being challenged with right now, and that's the cost of living. And it is getting more expensive to live here in St. Petersburg and in the greater Tampa Bay area. Just last year alone, we've increased 1.1% from a year ago. And I'm sure it's probably similar to where you live, but now we went from being almost equal with the national average to 1.5% higher than, that, than the national average in cost of living. And that is because of transportation, groceries, and housing. And really this is housing. We're gonna get deeper into this in a second, but I wanna share some numbers with you guys from salary.com. Um, I love this website. If you're considering relocating, this is a great resource for you. It allows you to put your uh, salary in, tells you how much money you need to make to live comfortably or live similar to your living now. It also shares, if you're looking at other metropolitan areas, what the, you could expect in terms of cost of living versus the city that you're looking in. So St. Pete versus uh, San Francisco, St. Pete versus Boston, St. Pete versus New York. It's a really good resource, so I wanna share this with you. So like I said, the cost of living has increased, but compared to the national average, we're 5.3% lower in energy costs, we're 11% lower in food costs, which it doesn't feel that way. I'm gonna be honest with you, it just hurts, man. Going to the grocery store is brutal right now. Um, we are 20% less in healthcare costs. Now, this is something I wanna make note of. Every single um, health professional that I spoke to who wants to move to the area said that, it, that they got an offer that was less than their current area that they were moving from. Now, a lot of those people are moving from areas like San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, which definitely have some of the highest incomes, but it's something to be mindful of. So I'm just sharing that with you now. And the reason I bring that up is because if your health care cost is 20% less, usually they're making it up somewhere, right? We live in the United States of America where they're not missing a dollar anywhere whenever they get a chance, right? So let's be real, y'all. All right, housing, 18.8%. I'm gonna give you the real numbers behind that. I'm not sure I totally agree with that number, uh, but nationally speaking, Tampa Bay and St. Pete are still on par with national averages, but let, let's dig a little bit deeper and transportation costs are 7.3% less. Now, if we're gonna compare St. Pete to other major cities across the country that you may be considering moving from or moving to, let's get into some of those numbers. San Francisco, it costs 86.5% more at the time of this recording to live in San Fran than it does in St. Pete, which is unbelievable. 45% uh, more to live in Washington, D.C. than it does in St. Pete. 15% more to live in Miami. I'm sure it's more than that, actually, but hey, we'll go with that. 12.5% more in Chicago, Illinois. 53% um, higher in Boston, Massachusetts. 77% higher in New York. And 7% higher in Dallas, Texas. Now, here's what I find interesting. We've been getting a lot of calls recently from people in Dallas. Uh, I know that area has grown like crazy, but more and more people have been reaching out to us considering making the move. We always get the calls from New York. That's normal. We definitely get the calls from Boston. That's been a, a hotbed too. Chicago especially. And we're, we'll get into some of these reasons why uh, when we start talking about the crime, right? Um, in San Francisco, because there are definitely some nuances and things people are moving away from, and that is why they find Florida attractive. So we're going to get into the, some, some of those things, but let's really dig into housing right now. Now, according to Redfin, at the time of this recording, the median sales price for a single family home here in St. Petersburg, Florida is $412,000 versus the national average of $422,000. Now, having said that, here's what I want you to know. You can spend as much money as you want here in St. Pete. You can literally spend tens of millions of dollars on homes. The homes they're talking about right now are not going to be the newest, the best, and the sexiest. As a matter of fact, new homes in St. Pete is a rarity. Most of the homes here were built in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Some of them were built at the turn of the century. So if you're thinking that you're gonna to come to St. Pete and get a brand new home, something that's been built in the last two to five years, and you're only gonna pay $412,000 for it, it's not gonna happen. If you wanna buy a condo down in St. Pete that has a garage attached to it, you're already talking probably 700,000 plus. I just wanna keep it real with y'all, okay? You can find a median single family home, but it's gonna be somewhere between 900 and 1200 square feet. It's gonna be a two to three bedroom home. These things are gonna be old. They may be updated. They may need a lot of work, but I just wanna keep it real, give you all the perspective. That way you know what to expect when you come to the area. And if you are considering making a move to St. Pete or the Tampa Bay area, feel free to reach out. All of my contact information is listed down below. Me and my team would love to have a conversation with you so we can help you make the best decision for you. Now, another one of the reasons that Florida is so attractive when it comes to the overall cost of living is that it is very tax friendly. 
We don't have a personal state income tax. There also is no tax on your pension or retirement plans. There's no estate tax when you head off to the pearly gates, and we have been recognized as the most friendly business state. Now, insurance is the one that's dragging everything down, and this has been a huge challenge. As a matter of fact, it's it's making people very nervous, and for good reason, y'all. I got to be honest, right? You know, the the you got a neighbor, and I'll give you an example. I've got friends, and I've had neighbors where the insurance company comes and sends them a letter, hey, if you don't change the roof, we're dropping you. And they bought their roof 15 years ago. It seems really unfair, but we're experiencing these challenges. Now, we're, Florida's not the only state that's f facing these challenges. California's facing these challenges because of their nat natural disasters. Georgia is starting to get these notifications too. And it is happening um, more than it should. I don't have an answer for how this is gonna be fixed. I gotta be honest with you, but it's not so bad where you can't get insurance. Here's what I wanna say, right? If your house is in good condition, you got a good roof, you got good windows, you take care of it, this is not an issue. It is becoming an issue for people who do not have the means to keep up with the things to keep their home safe from weather. And the insurance companies are dropping them. Unfairly, I, I don't agree with it, but I don't run the insurance company. So this is something to be mindful of. If, if it was a tremendous issue, we would have more houses for sale um, because people would be leaving the state in droves. They are not doing that. They're actually moving to the state. We've brought in more people than anywhere else in the country last year, but it is something that you need to be aware of. Like I said, that video is linked down below. Make sure you go check it out. Now let's get into what seems to be everybody's pet peeve, which is the traffic. And I gotta be honest with y'all, the lights here are forever long. And I, I've made this joke many times where like, you can literally knit a blanket. You can definitely write an email. You can call your friends. You can probably plan a wedding at these lights. I'm kidding. But it feels like that. They take forever. And the driving here in Florida in general, it's not just St. Pete, it is in Florida. You have people that move here from all over the world and all over the country that bring different driving habits <laughs> and different driving skills to the area. And you have a mix of probably more uh, retirees in the area than normal from where you're probably from. And this combination just makes for crazy town when it comes to driving. We've shared this story before. The first three years we lived here, our car was hit every year. And two of the three times, we weren't even in it. One time it was hit at Starbucks. We had a um, elderly gentleman back up into the front of my pickup truck. Another time we were on the highway and there was an accident. And somebody ran into the back of me, which is nuts. And then the third time, somebody tried to pass a bus on Central Avenue in St. Pete and ran into our car and two others real life okay last year we made it through unscathed Woo that was exciting but i'm just keeping it real y'all i'm telling you right now when you come down here to florida you got to keep your head on a swivel because <laughs> it's like it's like a video game out here it's like frogger when you're driving right now do i find it unsafe or i don't want to drive no nope. but here's what i'll tell you right now you can't be farting around your phone all the time you know and i'm not an advocate for that anyways but if you look around everybody's doing it i'll tell you what i don't do here anymore i don't ride a motorcycle because I would not engage in that activity here in Florida. I'm just not taking my life in the hands that way. Let's talk about public transportation, which I think is fair. I, I don't know if it's good or bad. If you're coming from a place like New York or Chicago, where you have the elevated train or the subway, um, you've got plenty of cabs everywhere, then it, you know it's definitely gonna be an adjustment for you. Here we have the Sun Runner, which uh, is a bus system that runs a loop on First Avenue South and First Avenue North, all the way over to the beaches, you know, so downtown St. Pete, all the way over to St. Pete Beach, which is great. You've got the uh, Suncoast um, Authority, which is the, the the busing system. That will take you all the way into Tampa. There are two routes that go all the way into downtown Tampa every day. That's cool, so that's available as well. Of course, there's Uber and Lyft. We also have uh, e-bikes that you can rent. You have regular bikes you can rent, and then scooters that are an option for you as well. But there's plenty of parking for the most part. There is public parking in St. Pete. You get the uh, the Park Mobile app and you can park just about anywhere and pay right from your app, which is really cool. There are parking structures down there too. And if you don't park right downtown, just a few blocks away, you can usually park in front of somebody's house and walk to an activity. So it's not that big of a deal, but it is something to keep in mind. Our roads are in really good condition overall here. I know a Floridian's listening to me right now and they think I'm nuts, but you, you haven't lived in Detroit or Chicago or any of these Northern cities where the roads blow your car up every single year. And uh, we don't have that here. Man, whenever I hear hit a pothole and I'm using that term lightly because it really it's just usually a, a worn out spot on the pavement, 
Um, it's not the kind that swallow automobiles or tear off rims like they did up north for us. <laughs> um, but you can feel it and you notice it because you're so used to the to the roads, which are I would I would give them a really fair rating. There are definitely some spots when you get downtown Tampa where these things can change a little bit. Overall, the quality of our roads way better than the northern states. I can't speak to out west. I've never driven out there. Every time I've I've gone out there, I've been drove. We flew, we've flown in and then I was, you know, in an Uber or Lyft or a bus or something getting drove around um, with my corporate work. So um, I don't have that experience, but overall the quality of our roads, I think are pretty darn good. Now we're gonna get into the weeds with something that no one ever wants to talk about, and that is crime and safety. I do have to set a few ground rules. Because I hold a real estate license, I am held to a different standard. I legally cannot tell you without putting my license at risk whether an area is safe or not. However, I'm gonna share with you two things, two resources. Number one is gonna be Neighborhood Scout, and that pulls its information from the FBI uh, database, and then also the Crime Viewer map from the county. All of the crimes that are public record, you can find right there. It's it's uh, provided by Pinellas County. It's a great resource. You can actually look by date, see exactly what type of crime it is. It's excellent. Now, here's what I want to share. According to the, the data, um, St. Pete is um, twice as likely to have a crime versus the rest of Florida, okay? Um, now, having said that, I wanna give perspective because you hear those numbers, your mind starts to go crazy. What I would encourage you to do is if you're in a major city, compare your city versus St. Pete. That is a great way to start. Look at things like violent crimes versus like, um, you know, uh, petty theft or burglary, those types of things. We live in a very tourist heavy area. We have a lot of petty theft, People leave their cars open. It's just crazy stuff. Don't do dumb stuff like that. Let's just be honest, okay? Number one, that's something to keep in perspective. The other thing that the Crime Viewer map allows you to do and Neighborhood Scout is dig into the neighborhoods because I'm here to tell you that these neighborhoods are not the same. You can have a neighborhood that is one of the safest in the state and there are also neighborhoods that would be recognized as the least safe. So you need to keep that in perspective as well. Now, from a personal perspective, here's what I wanna share. I started this conversation today by telling you that I take my wife and my family to St. Pete all the time. I have never been downtown and not felt safe. We go all the time. Okay, three to four times a month, we will make our way down as a family to St. Pete. We love St. Pete, okay? Now, I'm not going sticking my nose in places it doesn't belong. I grew up in Metro Detroit, y'all. That is a very tough city. When people told me that St. Pete was, was tough, I gotta be honest with you, it I made me laugh because <laughs> where I grew up, the cops would come, if you were in a place where you weren't supposed to be, they'd come tell you, it's time for you to leave. I've never had an experience here in St. Pete. We don't have people running into the malls and busting out glass and ripping stuff out. That does not happen here, okay? So, you know, you look at other major cities in the United States that are having crazy amounts of crime. That stuff does not happen here. It's just, it's different, okay? But you need to make an informed decision based upon data, not with some dude online saying, okay? I'm giving you my personal perspective about my family, but I would encourage you to go check out that crime app. Compare it to where you live, look at the specific neighborhoods. That's why I recommended those resources. I'm gonna put those down below for you as well, so make sure you check those out. All right, so we're out on the streets asking local St. Pete residents what they love about living in St. Pete and what they already cannot stand about living in St. Pete. So Gio has just moved here. You've been here three months, right? Yeah. A man's in fitness, as you can tell. He's bumpy and bumpy as, as you guys are checking that out right now. But Gio, what is the thing that you love so far about living in St. Pete? I love the atmosphere. I love the food. I love the people. I love the beautiful girls. I love the beach. Honestly, no complaints. It's, it's amazing. It's a good spot for young people, right? It's a great spot for young people. Awesome. Yeah. And what is the one thing that you've been here three months? What's the one thing you already can't stand? One thing I can't stand is probably the girls are a little bit stuck up. And uh, other than that, the traffic. I don't have no complaints. Traffic's pretty rough, right? Pretty solid here. Yeah. yeah, awesome. All right, Gio, thank you for your time, my man. We appreciate you. Thank you, Juan. Now, lastly, I wanna get into the people because here's what I know. You're gonna look in the comments here. There's gonna be a bunch of negative Nancys. There's gonna be people who love the city. And I wanna share this with you because someone shared this with me a long time ago. And it was a great quote that, that has stuck with me. And it was from a, a business mentor that I had. And he said, Juan, wherever you go, there you are. And what he meant by that was, if you're going to look for negative, you're gonna find it. If you go look for opportunity, you're gonna find that too. Is St. Petersburg perfect? No. 
Does it have people from all over the country? Yep. Does it have prisoners and popes? <laughs> sure does, right? And if, you know, every family has those too. And we're also in one of those weird times where people are mad at residents because of the politicians. And I have been blessed enough to travel this country. I have been to places like San Francisco. I have been to Denver. We live next to Chicago. I've seen a lot of beautiful places in this country. And here's what I know. The residents, the people who live in those areas who have, you know, worked and raised families and done all the things, those people are not always and most of the time are not a direct reflection of their politicians. Now, take that for whatever you want, okay? That's up to you guys. But here's what I'll say. We have loved our experience since moving here. Are there people who are whiny and complain? Yep, but you know what I had back in Detroit? People who whined and complained about everything too. Are there people who are here who are trying to make the best of it? Are there plenty of people who relocate from all over the country and are grateful just to have the sun shining every day? Are there people who are trying to make a better life here in Florida? The answer is yes, okay? So what I'll say is this. Our experience has been incredible with the people we've engaged with. It's not perfect. We shared some of the things that aren't great with you today. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and my team. All of my contact information is listed down below. I hope you got value. If you know anybody who's considering making the move down here, feel free to share this video with them. I'm sure it's gonna be helpful. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity to share with you guys. I'm gonna put a couple videos up here that I think make sense um, that you can check out next that'll really kind of help you solidify your decision. Until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.